Hi. In my early years out of the Watchtower, I was introduced to uh, a Christian martyr from World War II in Germany named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. In my, uh, because of my years of training as a witness, I would say it was easy for me to dismiss someone like Bonhoeffer because I disagreed with decisions he made. And I judged him based on my own conscience. Here is his story as outlined by Victor Shepard in his book, A Great Cloud of Witnesses. Dietrich Bonhoeffer lived from 1906 to 1945. When his paternal grandmother was 91 years old, she walked defiantly through the cordon that brutal stormtroopers had thrown up around Jewish shops. His maternal grandmother, a gifted pianist, had been a pupil of the incomparable Franz Liszt. His mother was the daughter of a world-renowned historian. His father, a physician, was chief of neurology and psychiatry at Berlin's major hospital. All of these currents, courage in the face of terrible danger, rare musical talent, and world-class scholarship flowed together in Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Since his family was religiously indifferent, family members were startled and amused when, and then incredulous, when Bonhoeffer announced at the age of 14 that he was going to be a pastor and theologian. His older brother, soon to be a, distingu a distinguished physicist, tried to deflect him, argued that the church was weak, silly, irrelevant, and unworthy of any young man's lifelong commitment. If the church is really what you say it is, replied the youngster soberly, then I shall have to reform it. Soon he began his university studies in theology at Tübingen, I don't know how to pronounce it, and completed them at Berlin. His doctoral dissertation exposed his brilliance on a wider front and introduced him to internationally known scholars. In 1930, Bonhoeffer went to the United States as a guest of its best-known seminary. He was dismayed at the frivolity with which the American students approached theology. Unable to remain silent any longer, he informed the pastors-to-be. At this liberal seminary, the students sneer at the fundamentalists in America, when all the while the fundamentalists know far more of the truth and grace and mercy and judgment of God. A gifted scholar and professor, Bonhoeffer remained a pastor at heart. By 1933, he had left university teaching behind and was a pastor to two German-speaking congregations in London, England. By now, the life-and-death struggle for the church in Germany was underway. Did the church live from the gospel only? Or could the church lend itself to the state in order to reinforce the ideology of the state? Bonhoeffer argued that the latter would render the church no church at all. An older professor of theology who had conformed to Nazi ide ide ideology in order to keep his job commented, it is a great pity that our best hope in the faculty is being wasted on the church struggle. As the struggle intensified, it was noticed that Bonhoeffer's sermons became more comforting, more confident of God's victory, and more defiant. The struggle was between the National Church, which supported Hitler, and the Confessing Church, called such because it confessed that there would be only one Fuhrer 
or leader for Christians, and it was not Hitler. Lutheran bishops remained silent in the hope of preserving institutional unity, while most pastors fearfully whispered that there was no need to play at being confessing heroes. In the face of such ministerial cowardice, Bonhoeffer warned his colleagues that they ought not to pursue converting Hitler. What they had to ensure was that they were converted themselves. An Anglican bishop who knew him well in England was later to write of him. He was crystal clear in his convictions, and young as he was, and humble-minded as he was, he saw the truth and spoke it with complete absence of fear. Bonhoeffer himself wrote to a friend about this time. Christ is looking down at us and asking whether there is anyone who still confesses him. Leadership in the confessing church was desperately needed. Bonhoeffer returned to Germany in order to teach at an underground seminary at Finkelwald near Berlin. Not one of the university faculty of theology had sided with the confessing church. Bonhoeffer commented tersely, I have long ceased to believe in the universities. A pacifist early in the war, Bonhoeffer came to see that Hitler would have to be removed. He joined with several high-ranking military officers who were secretly opposed to Hitler and who planned to assassinate him. The plot was discovered in April 1943. Bonhoeffer would spend the rest of his life, the next two years, in prison. Underground plans were in place to help him escape when it was learned that his brother, Klaus, a lawyer, had been arrested. Bonhoeffer declined to escape, lest his family be punished. He was never to know that his brother was executed in any case, along with Hans von Dockneny, I'm not sure if I pronounced his name right, his brother-in-law. Bonhoeffer always knew that it was that it is where we are by God's providence that we are to exercise the ministry God has given us. His ministry, henceforth, was an articulation and embodiment of gospel comfort to fellow prisoners awaiting execution. Captain Payne Best, an Englishman, survived to bear t tribute to the prison camp pastor. Bonhoeffer was different, just quite calm and normal, seemingly perfectly at his ease. His soul really shone in the dark desperation of our prison. He was one of the very few men I have ever met to whom God was real and ever close to him. Bonhoeffer was removed from the prison and taken to Flossenburg, an ex extermination camp in the Bavarian forest. On April 9, three weeks before American forces liberated Flossenburg, he was executed. Today the tree from which he was hanged bears a plaque with only ten words inscribed on it. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a witness to Jesus Christ among his brethren. The smug dismissiveness of those early days out of the watchtower have left me, although there are still times when, when David will say, your watchtower is showing. God's grace is sufficient for each of us. I'm going to link to two videos uh, that are based on, on judging. So uh, the first one is called, As JWs, We Did Not Leave Judgment to God. Only God qualified to judge lives and hearts, and it's based on a video I did from Mere Christianity readings of Lewis, C.S. Lewis's. And Fr Ray Franz also on JW's planks 
and Protestants splinter, splinters and Bonhoeffer, where he talks about Bonhoeffer in his book, Freedom of, um, in Search of Christian Freedom. And that was, uh, he was dealing with the passage in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, about a plank in your own eye and a splinter in your brother's eye. And uh, some comments that the Watchtower made, or use of the, the that Watchtower made of Bonhoeffer's writings.